But first, a message from our sponsor. Well, we all know that you get brutal checks by zorching a box of regular checks, but what happens if you zorch brutal checks? What could be more brutal than brutal checks? Whoa, it turned into the big box edition of Checks Quest by Limited Run Games that comes with a region-free PC copy of the game and the original game soundtrack, all in a physical two-disc jewel case. There's also a sweet reversible 18 by 24 inch poster. There's no way this could get more brutal, or could it? Holy Flemoy, the Chex Warrior Edition. Now we've reached peak brutal. You get everything in the last edition, plus a large premium foil rigid box, a USB drive with the game and soundtrack, a concept art lithograph, enamel pins, t-shirt, stickers, an intergalactic Chex Dalian of bravery, a metal Chex Warrior statue, and the coolest of all, a full-size Zorcher replica. Oh, and also check out the soundtrack on 180 gram Flemoid green vinyl. This Chex collection is a must-have for all Chex Warriors. Pre-orders are available until May 15th, so click our link in the description below today. 50 free hours of America Online are not mm. included. All right, this is the last installment of the month of Ape Rill, and we could have done some classic ape movies like, uh, um, 2001, A Space Odyssey, <laughs> the opening scene. But no, today we're gonna do Barefoot Executive. Now that's some real class. Did you pick this? Like, have you seen this before? Yeah, I actually, I loved it as a kid. Like this is just one of those movies that used to come on TV and uh, I used to watch it with my dad. And okay. um, I think my dad also showed me uh, John Carpenter's The Thing and was like explaining to me that it was the same guy in both those movies. Yeah, that would blow my mind actually. Yeah, so Kurt Russell, uh, plays a uh, Stephen Post and you know what wait we got to talk about that theme song first. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely That's actually the first thing that hits you is that insane theme song right in the beginning of the movie I don't know the words to it as probably as well you as you do I just know the the help of his barefoot friend part <laughs> He's gonna show A little bitty barefoot friend. The first thing, you know, while the whole theme song is playing, that part where Kurt Russell is really riding the motorcycle and he does some dangerous stuff. Like, I don't know if it was him who actually went underneath the truck, but he does all the parts where he's going in and out of cars and everything like that. He's not wearing a helmet. He goes up on the sidewalk and everything. I was actually really surprised by that. That was the first thing that hit me. Also in a Death Proof, he does all the car driving stunts. I mean, I don't think he does all of them, but he does a lot of the driving in it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like Kurt Russell doesn't mess around. So Kurt Russell, the plot of this movie is just hilarious to try and describe. So I'm gonna try. Um, okay. But this is this is kind of you can help help me along with this. This is a tough one. But uh, so Kurt Russell plays Stephen Post, who works an entry level position at a struggling TV network. I like how the logo of it is like CBS and NBC's logo at the same time. So his girlfriend Heather North as Jennifer, who is the voice of Daphne on Scooby Doo. Yep. Um, she's inherited or is babysitting this chimpanzee that likes to watch a lot of TV. So when Steve is over Jennifer's apartment, he gets stuck having to watch TV with the chimp. And at first he finds it really annoying because the chimp keeps changing the channels and gets really pissed off when it doesn't watch what it wants to. Um, like, I mean, this chimp straight up flips out if you change the channel on it. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. Uh, but then he realizes something, that the chimp is actually predicting all the top-rated shows, like all the shows that are going to go on to become a big success. Um, so he, when he goes into work, he goes into the network, he starts telling the higher-ups that he knows what shows are going to be popular, and he, it's proven again and again. So now the boss thinks he's like this genius, so he gets promoted until he's vice president of the company, but then the issues start when they want him to test out the shows at work. They want him to sit down and watch them in the workplace. So he has to sneak the chimp into the projection booth disguised as a plumber. Yeah, which they were just like, that's the shortest plumber I've ever seen. He's like a foot tall, that, that chimpanzee. Yeah. Not to mention he's all hairy and everything, but... Yeah. <laughs> and then 
a bunch more stuff happens. They, they, they catch on to him. They start to learn that, that it's actually a chimp. And um, the network sends these, like, almost like um, spies in to, like, investigate what's going on. Well, they, the one guy who's the spy is uh, is the nephew of the guy who who used to run the station before Kurt Russell took over, who's actually John Ritter. Yeah, when I was like watching it, uh, cause I was like, man, this guy looks so familiar the entire time. The guy who plays like the jerk, who's like the nephew. And it's John Ritter when he was like 20. Yeah, and I love that the characters in this movie, they're all sort of exaggerated. Like they're almost like live action cartoons. Like there's yeah. the chief, like the highest up guy, uh, Mr. Crampton. Oh, and yeah. and the whole time he kind of talks out the side of his mouth like this. Like yeah. I like when he calls him up and he's like, uh, when it, when he finally predicts all the stuff and he's like, uh, he's like, I've been calling you for half the day already. Where have you been? And he's like, oh well, it's there's a there's a three hour time difference and everything. And he's just so like these the the executive people are all the worst pretty much. They're oh, all like terrible. Shakes his head like this when he talks a little bit. Like yeah. it's this very exaggerated. Um, like he just talks like a dick. Like you just these characters you very instantly get to know like what they're what they are you know to be honest i feel like every character in this movie other than jenny was an asshole like even even steven uh kurt russell's character is like such a dick in the very beginning and i mean i mean to be fair the chimp is pretty uh difficult but yeah he's just mean to it but also like his idea in the beginning uh the Abraham Lincoln's doctor's dog is horrible. Like, no one's going to watch that shit. <laughs> Dude, I want to watch Abraham Lincoln's doctor's dog. I mean, that sounds good. He has a presentation ready, too, on, like, particle board and stuff, or, like, uh, on cardboard. It's like, that would never work. So he was, he was, he was fucked to begin with. He was going to be a male boy forever until Raffles came along, and then he exploited the shit out of Raffles, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the chip name is Raffles. Oh, the, the quotes that he says in this movie are like some of the best Kurt Russell quotes, like... With all the pets in the world, you gotta end up with a chimp that likes bad TV. I like uh, when he starts saying, the when he's trying to prove to them that a young guy could run the company, and he's like, how old was uh, was Alexander the Great when he took over Macedonia? And, he's, and he tells them, they, and they uh, tells him about the... Uh, the king that was nine months old when he became king and stuff. And then they all go on to use those quotes later exactly, on. Exactly, but they mess them up as they go on. They start yeah, saying them differently. Saying it to people, and at first everybody's like, oh, that's stupid. And then they start saying it and everything. I like how every, I like all the characters for, for how they're played. I just don't think I like any of the characters as people. Yeah, it, it's one of those where they're people that you're meant to like not like. There's also, so Will Banks is like the boss. He's like the, the guy under the chief. Um, and he he's basically like like Bud Abbott. Like he has kind of like a Bud Abbott voice. And yeah. then the driver guy, the chauffeur, he's like got the, a Lou Costello voice. And when you finally see them both together in that last scene when they're they're trying to spy. Oh, on, on the on the ledge, right? Yeah. 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 Like that whole scene is like an Abbott and Costello thing almost. Um, cause he has kind of that like wheezing that Costello, that, ee, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Hither. stop hiccuping. First you wheeze and then you hiccup. I can't help it. I always hiccup when I get nervous. Hither. Well, stop it. I can't stand it. Don't you understand that? I can't stand it. That scene when they're hanging on the building, there's actually like, it looks like, like, there's danger in that scene. There's actually, like, tension. It's horrifying, to be honest. Like, uh, I, I will say one thing, though, is uh, Will Banks is strong as fuck. Because oh, yeah. every time, uh, wait, I think his name is uh, Merton or something, the, the driver guy. Every time he falls, Will Banks is able to just grab him and pull him back up. Back up. Yeah, and by the tie sometimes. Like, could yeah. you imagine, he like even gets climbed. Like he climbs up Will Banks while Will Banks is is hanging on, and he and they're fine. For like an old dude, that guy is strong. I love when the uh, when the helicopter comes in, and he's like, "Oh, I think they're coming to rescue us," and he's like, "That's our news helicopter. They're coming to they're coming to take pictures of us." <laughs> he's like humiliating them on TV. Yeah, and then like what uh, what's his name Crampton's watching it at home, and uh, he's like, "Ah, oh, look at that. That's a first for any t TV station with that camera." And then he sees it's the executive and flips out. <laughs> okay, so I guess let's we'll get back into the plot a little bit more. 
because uh, so the whole thing, Kurt Russell, he uses raffles to predict all the shows and that goes well for him. He gets a, you know, he gets an Emmy. He he gets this great job and everything. And then they start uh, getting annoyed with him because they think he's going to take their jobs. So they find out about raffles. And then when they find out about him, they realize that a chimpanzee has been uh, predicting every number one TV show, and that makes television look terrible yeah. because a, a chimp is is predicting the top rated shows for every single person to watch. And j just to think, like the most top rated show is a show called Devil Dan. Like yeah. I want to see Devil Dan. That's Devil another. Dan <laughs> looked cool. I don't know. I, I think either way. Like if I were an executive, you wouldn't need. I wouldn't need a chimp to tell me that Devil Dan looked like it was going to be a good show. Over what the other show, The Something Family, I don't even remember. I'd rather watch Devil Dan. The ending for me fell kind of flat for the whole movie. Yeah. I felt like there, like I had a better idea of what the ending was going to be, and it's what I thought it was going to be. So the whole thing is, you know, they find out about the chimp, so they decide to buy the chimp from Steve, and they offer him a million dollars, and he takes it and sells the chimp after he's become friends with the chimp and Jenny leaves him because of it and she's all mad. And then they decide that they're going to take the chimp and just throw him in the jungle somewhere. And uh, when they're trying to do that, the you know, Raffles g opens up the plane and all the executives fly out of the, of the plane and fall into the jungle somewhere. And then they offer... Uh, they offer Steve to buy the chimp back for a million dollars. So he ta he gives back the million dollars for the chimp and then marries uh, Jenny. But in my mind, there's a part in the, in the middle of it where they buy that second chimp, the decoy that he uses to, uh, to take, you know, raffles home with him. And he gives Jenny the weird chimp from the, uh, from the pet store. So I was like, why didn't he just give them that chimp? take the million dollars and then them all just leave together with a million dollars. And then the, the TV executive companies are just stuck with this, this normal chimp that doesn't predict the TV. Yeah. That would have been a better gag. Well, cause the thing is too, now at the end of the movie, they all leave like they're, you know, they're, they're all happy and they're, they're together and stuff and they get married and, and him and Jenny and raffles are riding on their motorcycle down to their honeymoon. But in my mind, I was like, well, what, whatever happened to that other chimp is it just sitting in jenny's apartment starving to death like they never mention what happened to the second chimp it's just never talked about ever again yeah the ending definitely leaves a lot up in the air that they i guess literally up in the air um yeah. they're jumping out of a plane but yeah all the tv executives are stuck in the jungle somewhere probably dead they're yeah. most likely dead. Yeah, and you don't really see any of it either. It's just kind of like, all right, you have to just sort of imagine that part. Yeah, know? like they say that they're going to do an expedition or whatever to go get them. But in that amount of time, they're in a remote area of the jungle. There are a bunch of like old TV executives. A jaguar ate them or a snake killed them or, or a, you know, another wild ape that was inside the jungle. <laughs> it sounds like a whole other movie. <laughs> yeah, actually, that would be the sequel, is them, like, surviving in the jungle. Like, some of the moments in this movie that stand out, he breaks two TVs in a row. Like, it starts off where, like, they're they're looking at, like, the display TVs in the front of the store in the window, and the, the store owner or one of the workers comes by and changes the channels, and the chimp just flips flips out and then throws, like, a brick or something at it, and it breaks... And then the next shot is like a mug shot of the of the the chimp, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and he's getting, yeah. And there's like a police officer giving him the fingerprints and everything. And then the police officer changes the TV to basketball or something. And then the chimp breaks the TV again. Yeah. And it's just like you don't want to be around this chimp. Like th this chimp has th this chimp has a worse temper than AVGN. Like yeah. with like games. <laughs> Like, I don't even think the nerds ever, not that often, has bro broken a TV. No, yeah. like, uh, you know what I like, too, is when he breaks the TV and the cop's like, hey, that was $75 you owe us or what? <laughs> and he's like, he has to bail, uh, he, he bails out the chimp and pays for the TV instead of bailing out Roger, the, the douchey guy. 
I also like the part when um the the what was John Ritter you said yeah. was um the guy who when he goes he sneaks into the apartment the first time and he, he meets up with with the chimp he meets up with Raffles and then later on he he's describing what happened and it's like this horror movie where he's like I just saw like empty banana peels laying around and then a hairy arm grabbed me with no body and no feet yeah. <laughs> That was like that. That part was great, and I really loved the uh, what's it called when when they're bringing uh, after the whole scene on the ledge, where uh, the one guy falls off the ledge and they catch him and everything, and he's like, "You don't understand. There was a chimp, and he was predicting TV." And they're like, "Oh, he's crazy. Throw him in the." And they just like he's screaming about this whole thing after they think he's like a jumper. And he's screaming about this chimp that's predicting TV, so they automatically put him in like a hospital. They just tie him down to the bed and everything. And then there's the um, the, the whole scene where they're interviewing everybody about the um, like, oh, did you know the chimp's predicting it? And they they interview like this construction worker guy, and he's like, yeah, I knew it all the time, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, the old lady that gets upset about uh, about her shows, and she's yeah. like, every time I get into a show, they cancel it. So maybe a chimp is running the TV. Also, I felt so horrible when, when Steve, because, so that's the thing about Steve. Like, he's an asshole to the chimp in the beginning. Then he realizes that he can capitalize off the chimp, so he's cool to him, kind of. But then he yeah. locks him in a room all the time. I guess he does give him, like, a whole bunch of bananas and shit. Which yeah. Is cool. Oh, and it, the chimp's got beer also. So yeah, he, he drinks beer at the commercials and <laughs> he yeah. goes up and gets a beer. That's not good. <laughs> you can't have a, a chimp drinking beers. It's horrible. And then also, like, uh, what's it called? So he sells the chimp, and, uh, like, he just sells him. Like, he doesn't even give a shit. He sells this chimp, and they just put him in chains and walk him out and everything. That, that scene, like, broke my heart. Even the even Steve like realized, like, man, I fucked up. Like, I look at my buddy. Like, this guy got me to where I'm at. This, the he raffles the chimp, and here they are wheeling him out. They're gonna launch him out of a plane. Yeah, I felt horrible for him. They they could have made it more dramatic, but I think everything goes by so quick in this movie that yeah. it always kind of has like that comedic pace. It was but, a quick watch, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a funny movie. I mean, it's 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 kind of like you got to go into it like not expecting a whole lot, but it's it's just a really. I don't know, it's a kind of a charming, funny movie. Like, yeah, it really is. I I gotta say, I loved it. I've never seen this movie before. Uh, and it, honestly, like, it, it, it has a really, like, it, you know, it's a classic film. Uh, it's got that old school feel to it. Uh, and it's heartwarming. But Steve is still a dick up until, like, the last minute of the movie. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but at least he kind of, like, gets one over on all the other people who are worse than him, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that they all made it out and they were all good. Yeah. I just think, uh, don't be, you know, actually I was thinking too, man, the way Steve acts in this, I, I could see him being uh, Jack Burton in Big Trouble in Little China, like growing up to be Jack Burton. Yeah. The way he like everything he says and just how like Jack Burton is kind of like rude and mean all the time to everybody. Like he's kind of a jerk. Maybe that's what it was, was uh, Jack Burton and that weird, uh, that weird monkey thing at the end of Big Trouble in Little China. Maybe that's Raffles. Oh, no. <laughs> Mutated Raffles. <laughs> they go on adventures in their truck. Oh, and actually, now that you mention it, if you mash up Barefoot, you know, you could also do Barefoot Executive Decision. Oh. But it's Kurt Russell and Raffles on a plane with nerve gas. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the month of April. Next month... Whoa! That's the theme for next month? That's crazy! Oh, sorry. I know it's rare for me to interrupt James, but I had to this time. I, I can't believe he picked what he picked for next month's theme. Oh, man, this is too good to give away here. You guys are going to have to come back next week to figure out what it is. Can you guess what it is? Leave your guess in the comments. I can't wait to not wear the safari hat anymore. Bye.